Hi everyone, this is just a quick video for Oak National. Uh, if you read in my blog about uh, live streaming Oak lessons, this is how I tend to go about it. Uh, I'm using Microsoft Teams. I'm gonna click uh, Meet Now. So in we go. Um, imagining that there is a bunch of students uh, in my lesson waiting. Obviously there isn't, this is just me at the moment. But I'm gonna enter the room. I'm just gonna make sure my mic's turned off and my camera's off and in we go. Okay, so I'm in Microsoft Teams. Now what I'm gonna do uh, at this point is just to kind of demonstrate, I've got um, an Oak lesson here, which I'm gonna bring up on screen. Uh, this is just from history and it's medicine through time. Okay, so we'll just go for this one here. And I tend to leave it on this screen here, which is the lesson overview. I don't go into the lesson, I mean you could do, but I don't, I just tend to leave it on here. And I scroll down and you've got your, your video lesson here, okay? So I'm gonna go back to Teams. Here we are. And I'm gonna click Share Content. Now on Teams, it gives you the option here and this took me a while to figure out. Um, thanks to uh, Tom Starkey and various other people who, who helped me out on, on Twitter with this, but you've got a button here that says Include Computer Sound. So I'm gonna click that. So now when I share this with students, they're gonna also get the sound as well. So I'm gonna click the screen here with the Oak National and we're now presenting screen. So this is now streaming to students as a screen presentation. And if I click play on video, Hello, I'm Miss McCartney. Today I'm introducing... They will also be hearing that and seeing it. Now obviously that depends on their own Wi-Fi connections as it would with anything else, but they'll also be seeing and hearing the content. Now what this allows me to do is I'm in control now of this content. It means that, for example, in this lesson, if we zoom along with Miss McCarthy, uh, to the comprehension questions, which are usually present in an Oak Academy lesson, for example here, um, where you've got your comprehension questions, I can then pause the video when these questions come up on the screen, and then I can ask students to complete them. And then I can press play again. It just means that I have control of that. Now, while that video is being streamed to students, so for example, while the video is actually playing back here, and it's the kind of explanation part of the lesson, if you like. And this will help you maintain your concentration. I can then go to Microsoft Teams while this is happening, and I can join the chat. So I can go to show conversation, and I can encourage the students to get involved in the in the chat function there. I'll just I'll just mute that. But obviously, while you're in the lesson, you're not going to mute it. And I'm going to get involved in the chat there, and I'm going to ask the students questions. I might post additional links. I might give them a bit of feedback. I might engage in a bit more Q&A with them. But the, the lesson is actually being taught here. So I right now, I can just concentrate on this. Notice that I've got my camera and mic off. I've got them both muted. Now it's important, I think, I'm not an expert on this, but I think it's important to mute your own mic while you're streaming the material. So obviously your it doesn't echo through. That's what I tend to do anyway. Um, but somebody else could correct me if that's unnecessary, but I just tend to have both of these muted. And it's quite easy then to just turn them back on. Now obviously this red box here on Teams, I don't know if you can see that on the recording, actually you can at the top. Um, that shows the screen that is being shared. So obviously, I'm just making sure it's the Oak Academy uh, lesson that's being shared. Now what I tend to do at this point is I might use a different piece of software. So for example, menti.com, which is which is brilliant. And thank you, uh, Miss Tappenden for sharing this at TM History Icons uh, the other day. So I might use something like this, either at the start or the end uh, as one of my kind of plenary tools um, where essentially I am asking the students to engage with a quiz or with some um, 
information that they've gained in the lesson. So you can see here the ones that I've, I've already done. Uh, let's have a look at uh, Jenner and vaccinations. Uh, so for example here, uh, this is the information that the students submitted and all students can see that because I'm sharing the screen. So right now I can go to present and Menti generates a code like so and I will actually put it in now. So if I go to menti.com and I input that code and then I can actually enter something into this. Just putting in on my phone now the code at the top into menti.com. I'm pressing submit. It comes up with the question. Question is, what do you remember about how Jenna managed to discover a vaccine for smallpox? I'm just gonna put any old thing in. He worked very hard, how about that? He worked very hard, submit, and it appears on the board down here. So straight away, the students can all see this and they can all contribute. And it's literally that easy on their phone to do that. They just go to no app needed, just go to menti.com, input the code, and then they can answer. So something like that at the start and the end of the lesson or end of the lesson tends to work really, really well. And there's not just Menti. I mean, there's loads of things like Kahoot and other things you can use for, for quizzing. Um, so I'm just gonna stop presenting now. Um, so it's really important you can stop presenting and then obviously I, I might turn my camera on then and do some, make it a bit more interactive with the students in the last uh, five minutes or first five minutes or first 10 minutes and then move to the Oak lesson and say, this is my, I, I tend to introduce it, this is my co-teacher. Um, you know, and the students, the students like it. You know, the feedback I've had from students so far is, has been good. Um, and uh, and yeah, it works. And and the thing is, it's it's more effective. It's reducing. If you're having to do, you know, five hours of live lessons a day, you know, you can't. You don't want to be reinventing the wheel. You know, these are expert teachers, so I'm going to make use of them, and I'm going to make sure that I'm using this material and not um, putting that massive onerous on myself to recreate the wheel. The lessons are already there. The content's already there. The questions are already there. The tasks are. Yes, I'm going to input my own kind of uh, uh, put my own touch into it, and I'm going to put uh, my starter in there. I'm going to put uh, my own AFL in there. But essentially, the skeleton of that lesson is there, and that's that's basically how I've gone about most of my online lessons so far.